What's up guys, my name's George. We're gonna be doing a room tour of all the tanks and animals that I own. Everything from saltwater reef tanks to freshwater planted tanks. There's even gonna be some indoor, outdoor koi ponds. There's a lot to cover. Let's get right into it. So the first tank is my 10 gallon saltwater reef tank. It's full of corals. The two beautiful white clownfish in here, their names are Scarlett Johansson and Sean White. I've had these fish for over five years. You're also gonna notice down here, I have a little cleaner shrimp and he's super cool. His name's Jacques. He's the exact same shrimp from the movie Finding Nemo. He does the exact same thing where he'll just go crazy and wanna clean everything in the tank. A really cool angle to see this tank at is from the top down. If you look in there, you'll be able to see just how big some of the corals are. It's kind of a cool view of the tank. Massive euphelia corals, Kenya tree in the back. You have some frog spawn, candy cane, mushroom corals. I'll feed them really quick. Here he goes. You'll see the cleaner shrimp, if you stick your fingers in the tank, he'll want to clean your fingers. And I guess I'm not that dirty. This is a small little planted tank I have. There's a couple different pieces of dragonstone in there. There's a moss ball. I have a bunch of little tiny fish. The whole top of the tank is overrun with duckweed. Duckweed is this like plant that sits at the surface of the water. It'll just grow like crazy. But something fun that's been trending recently, it's a massive trend on TikTok, is these fish portals. Basically the idea is you take a little portal piece, you throw it in the tank like that, and then you start removing the duck weed from inside of the portal until finally you're left with a fish portal. How cool is that guys? And the fish will come to the surface and eat from that food and that's just so cool. Basically it's like a little viewing window into the tank. So this is a freshwater 20 gallon long and in here the whole tank is dedicated to my electric blue crayfish smurfette. This crazy blue color that you're seeing is actually the color that they were born with and it's a very rare color. She just likes to roam around back and forth over the rocks, over the plants. She's got massive blue claws and then all these little legs on her underside it's really entertaining to just sit here some days and watch her and just see what she does then this over here is my 2500 gallon indoor koi pond this is my most recent project so there's two 10 foot glass panels and i have 10 Japanese koi fish in here. So I actually picked all 10 of these out in Japan from the breeders themselves. Each of these koi is a very high-end fish. They'll come up right to the surface of the water. They'll give you kisses. They'll eat right out of your hand. They're absolutely beautiful fish. Come on, koi. Time to eat. Hello. Hello. I was just about to feed the koi. Oh, can I? You can. Get out of my hands. It took over a week to build this pond. Six hours to completely fill all the way to the top with water. After we filled it with water, I put in a whole gallon of Fritz Aquatics Turbo Start. Turbo Start is a super concentrated bacteria that will rapidly cycle any aquarium or body of water for that matter. Within a couple days, the pond was cycled. I put all the koi fish in here and it's been smooth sailing ever since. The pond is still not yet finished. I wanna cover all the outside walls of the pond with a type of stone. The back walls are gonna get covered with an artificial type of rock. I need to escape the inside of it. And then I also wanna put a ton of vegetation around the back walls. There's still so much left. Most of the parts and pieces for that transformation have been ordered. There's been some supply issues lately. So that's part of the delay. Moving on over here, this is my desk. Now, as fun as it may look that I'm always traveling, making these fun videos, I spend the majority of my time right here at scripting out, editing, and producing videos. We got my laptop, and this pile of hard drives. It just seems to keep getting taller and taller. Now, this hard drive right here is extra special right now. This contains all my videos from my recently shot Amazon series. I go into the jungle with this man, Heiko Blair, who's 85 years old, famous around the world for finding fish in the aquarium hobby. And we search the rivers of the Amazon jungle for 17 days, trying to find new fish. That series is coming up, so keep your eyes on the lookout. So this is where I keep some of my fan mail and a lot of the really cool things that you guys have sent in to me. There's everything from letters to art pieces, even some really Really cool projects like this custom pair of shoes, a deck of playing cards, pieces of acrylic, artwork, and even some insane stuff like this figurine featuring my clownfish, corals, and a Nasaria snail on the back. One of you guys sent in this plush mantis shrimp. I had to give up my mantis shrimp hulk when I decided I wanted to travel. And this absolutely made my day. That's just so amazing, so nice and thoughtful. You'll also see that the rest of my basement has a ton of different aquatic themed artwork, tons of different pieces from different artists, 
Some are featuring my fish and animals. Others you'll see have the Aquashella logo, a company that I co-founded. We've grown it to become the largest aquarium event in America for both freshwater and saltwater hobbyists. We have three locations. So we do one in Orlando, one in Chicago, and the Dallas one is coming up on October 30th and 31st. So it's happening this month. And because it's on Halloween, we're even doing a costume contest where the winner is going to be receiving a $5,000 aquarium. I really hope you guys are able to make it. I'm going to be there, of course, and I'm really excited to meet a lot of you. The tickets sell fast, so I'll leave the ticket link down in the description below. Over here, this is my dream planted aquarium. It's one of the tanks that I've been super excited to show you guys because it has changed so much. I decided to rehome the discus and instead I introduced just a whole bunch of really small freshwater fish. I have a bunch of rasboras, a bunch of different types of tetras. We have neon, albino, and ghost tetras. I ended up making the switch because I think that really small fish better suit this scape. When you put smaller fish into a scape like this, it makes everything in the tank look a lot bigger. It gives it more perspective and some depth. So the mountains made of dragonstone look way more grandiose. So as you can see, the plants have really grown into the scape. The really big green leafy plant that you're seeing, that's called Anubius. You also have this big clump of Christmas moss that's kind of taken over and is ascending up into the mountains. And then down here, we have this new carpeting plant. My goal for this plant is for it to cover the entire bottom of the tank to make it look like these mountains are like growing in a field of grass. I am running CO2 on this tank. This is the SR Aquaristic CO2 system. You'll see this thing is releasing all these little micro bubbles. That is CO2. The plants really benefit from it. They grow a lot faster. They look a lot more green. This tank I definitely love to just sit in front of and watch. It's like the most peaceful thing ever. We can feed these fish real quickly. So I'm gonna get my food and then we'll feed the fish. And seeing all these colorful fish swarm the food is, is really fun. So this is where my my flower horn Thanos used to live. Unfortunately, you guys, Thanos the flower horn died not too long ago. Flower horns really only live to be about four to five years old. They have fairly short life expectancies, likely because it's a pretty genetically engineered fish. Now, Thanos did live to the age of four, so he lived out most of his expected lifespan. Big George and I buried him together in the backyard. We said some really good last words. If you guys are watching right now and you love Thanos, make sure to drop a comment. I know he's watching and I'm sure he's still very angry. I do miss Thanos a lot. This tank now is just used as a quarantine for any new incoming fish or sick fish. Um, Moving on over here. So this is all the carpet that we had to remove to install the indoor koi pond. This is kind of cool. So these are all the props from my different videos. These are the bulletproof vests that we used for my mantis shrimp video. The army suit we used to break into area 51. The construction worker outfits we used from my outdoor pond build. These are the palm trees from my dorm videos. These are the dad shoes and hat that I used for my Forrest Gump scene snowboard and Santa costume from my Christmas video. These are the overalls from when I was out on a farm with little Joe. My USA sweatsuit from when I trained to fight a mantis shrimp. And the pool I used to sometimes transfer my koi. We got the fish rug to get people in the mood for what they're about to see down here. We are ready to go upstairs and check out the tanks up there. All right, this is my dad's office. What's up, Mr. Ted? Hey, George. What's going on? Good, how are you? What are you doing in here? Good to see you. The artwork even makes its way into other parts of the house, like my dad's office. So he's got a blue spotted jawfish drawing, and he's got a painting of some orca whales where the eye is actually the Aquashella logo. Why are these in your office, Dad? Well, I just picked them up while I was at Aquashella. I believe uh, the first one, it was in Chicago, the first time, the first Aquashella that took place. Then the second one, it was in Dallas, and I cherish them. I, it reminds me of Aquashella events, and I love them. The cousins, these are my first cousins, Big George and Tanya. Hi, everyone. Everyone is always asking in the comments, who is Big George, and how is he related to you? Why is everyone so curious, though? To put all the questions to rest, he's my first cousin. So, yes, we're first cousins, and our grandpa was named George, so that's why we're named George. And in the Greek tradition, typically most people are named after the grandfathers. Name. Pretty much it. Really? This is our dog, Melly. So someone commented on the last time we did a room tour. They said, I feel like your dad is one of those dads that didn't want a dog in the first place and now sees her as his baby. Wow. These people are okay. spot on, man. Well, this is so true. Very perceptive. And that got 1.2 thousand upvotes. Does this make me a bad person? Or it means that someone has the capacity to change. Mm -hmm. 
leading to this is my 150 gallon piranha tanks. There's six red belly piranhas in here. We obviously had the incident with my cousin Jack, but recently we had another incident with my dad. I got a text message from my mom one day with this photo. I'll put it up on the screen. Dad, you wanna tell the story? So I just grabbed the foot. Usually I drop them from the top. The minute that I drop it, one of them just jump up and just grab my thumb. Got a big chunk of my thumb. It happened so fast, so unexpectedly. Plus now the pain. Now I have blood. That wasn't my best day. Six feet away, my new way of feeding piranhas nowadays. From a distance and by throwing the foot like this, there's no way for them to get me again. Cousin Jack. These are the two guys in my family that have gotten bit by the piranhas. This is America, you know. So whoever is damaged is entitled to a compensation. So I would say he better compensate me and Jack for the damage before we file a formal lawsuit. Guys, I feel like we can work <laughs> something out. Settlement. You better make your offer fast. I'll take cash. Yeah. So Jack's like, I want a piece of that too. Sure. <laughs> we have some art in the kitchen too. This is by Lisa Lockery, an artist from Aquashella. George had it made as a surprise for me and he also had one made for my sister his aunt as a big thank you for helping out at all the different aquashellas all right so moving on outside this is our outdoor pond this is usually where the koi live during the summer we built the indoor pond to be able to house the koi during the winter this pond although it's a lot longer it's actually only 700 gallons which means it's three times less water volume than the indoor pond this part of the backyard was just like a little bit of grass and a small garden and we had Greg Whitstock, the pond guy, come out and totally transform this area into the outdoor pond that it is today. Since then, my mom has done an absolutely amazing job planting different things around the pond and making it look super pretty. We have all sorts of different water plants, water lilies, flowers, carpeting plants, perennials, mosses, flowers. You can see also right now, it's sort of the end of the day. The lights have come on in the pond. Recently, we hung up these string lights. We're even able to enjoy it at night. So we'll just come out here and just relax and get some peace, so. I really love the pond. I don't think we could live anywhere now without a pond brings nature right into our yard. In here, this is where I keep my water mixing station and a lot of the hardscape that I use for my tanks. Uh, this is my RODI machine, pure, fresh RODI water. Send it over into this container where it becomes salt water. And as you can see, I'm using Fritz Aquatics Reef Pro Mix salt that I've been using for the longest time. Then down here is a saltwater rock, some dragonstone, seru stone, and even some driftwood up here. My channel is, of course, sponsored by Fritz Aquatics. They're one of my longest standing sponsors. And I ultimately just continue to do stuff with them because I really like their products. They make really high quality stuff. Their salt, their Fritz glass cleaner, their supplements, their medications, their filter media, max out. I use it all. All right guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the room tour. One thing before I go, with so much going on right now for me, with three aquashellas a year, I got this special project that's coming soon, and my Amazon series that's dropping within a couple weeks. I'm looking for an executive assistant. This would be a full-time position, whether that be answering emails, helping shoot and edit videos, scripting out sponsorships, helping me out with all my aquariums down here. So if this is a position that you would be interested in, I'll leave a link down in the description to an unlisted video that has all the details and how to apply. Thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next one. But until then, remember to keep those nitrates low. George, out.